Welcome to another edition of Cancer Facts with Dr. B. Today's question is, which treatment is better for prostate cancer, a prostatectomy or cyberknife? We are going to help the listener determine this by evaluating the facts and not just listening to expert opinions or patient opinions. In order to do this comparison, it is very important to consider each case individually. So let's take an example. Case number one, 65 year old male with a PSA of 15, on his biopsy, he has grade group 2 disease in 5 of the 12 core sampled, and there are no palpable nodules on his digital rectal exam. We are going to apply the care about me principle in order to figure out which treatment is better. First, we will assign the patient to the proper risk category. Based on what we know before treatment, he would have favorable intermediate risk prostate cancer with a CAPRA score of 5, which would place him in area 4 on the schematic. Based on the data in the literature, here are the chances his cancer will be controlled with surgery. With a CAPRA score of 5, his 5-year cancer control rate is 60%. Based on the Memorial Sloan Kettering nomogram, his 5-year cancer control rate is 71%, and at 10 years it drops to 56%. Based on the Mayo Clinic data, based on his grade group alone, he has a 48% chance of cancer control at 10 years. And based on the D'Amico intermediate risk category, he has a 68% chance of his cancer being controlled at 10 years. Based on a multi-institutional trial of academic and community-based practices, here are the results for CyberKnife. At five years, the cancer control rate is 97.1%, and at 10 years, it's 90.7%. Next, what are the adverse events or side effects? For a prostatectomy, it includes the surgical risk, irritation of a Foley catheter for one to two weeks, time away from work for recovery, urinary incontinence with a 55% risk at six months and 21% at five years, erectile dysfunction. This depends on the baseline function, but on average, there's a 50% risk of developing impotence if you have good function to begin with, but can be better in younger men with great pre-surgical function. There's reduced penile size for up to a year, alterations in orgasmic function, and persistent mild urinary bother symptoms. For the CyberKnife, there is a need to place gold seeds in the prostate through the skin or rectum. The space OAR gel can also be placed at the same time to protect the rectum from radiation. A CT scan and an MRI scan are then obtained for planning purposes. And then the patient undergoes five treatments, either consecutively or every other day, the treatments usually last 20 to 40 minutes. The patient is awake, their clothes are on, they're listening to music, there are no incisions, there's no anesthesia, and there's no recovery time. The patient can just get up and go uh, have dinner after his treatment. The main side effects are temporary urinary bother symptoms that tend to improve soon after the treatments have been completed. The severity depends on the urinary function before treatment. These tr include frequency, urgency, a slow stream, pain with urination. The chance of incontinence is only 1%. The chance of needing a catheter is about 1%. The chance of erectile dysfunction is only 23% in men with good pretreatment function, but can also be better in younger men with great pretreatment function. There's alterations in orgasmic function, and the risk of developing cancer from the radiation 10 to 20 years after treatment is estimated to be about 1% excess risk. Hormones will not be needed for this patient. The main downside is that there are no patient reported outcomes at 10 years. There's only doctor reported data which states that very few new side effects happen after seven years. What is the retreatment rate? For surgery, 40 to 50% of patients will have to consider 36 to 39 radiation treatments with or without hormonal therapy when the PSA reaches 0.2 nanograms per milliliter. This is based on new randomized data comparing adjuvant radiation therapy to salvage radiation therapy after a prostatectomy. The typical trigger PSA for getting salvage radiation therapy was 0.2 nanograms per milliliter. Also, we know that as the PSA goes up every 0.1 point, the chance of the radiation controlling the cancer also goes down. For CyberKnife patients, only 10% of men will have to consider retreatment. There is no good data for early salvage. However, a common option is to wait for the PSA to reach 2.0 nanograms per milliliter and obtain a PET scan. 
then the PET scan can be used to dictate treatment. The good news is that retreatment with radiation is now an option for patients that have already had radiation and can, and can be a single interstitial brachytherapy procedure or five cyber knife treatments versus 36 to 39 external beam radiation treatments that you would get after surgery. Surgery is not recommended after radiation therapy because of the severe side effects. The total cost and out-of-pocket cost are variable but should be considered. To summarize, this patient is in the favorable intermediate risk category with a CAFRA score of 5. He has a 50% chance of the cancer coming back at 10 years with surgery versus 10% with CyberKnife. He has a 20% chance of urinary incontinence with surgery at 10 years versus 1% with CyberKnife. He has a 50% risk of erectile dysfunction at 5 years with surgery versus 25% with CyberKnife. The risk to the rectum can be very low with CyberKnife, especially if the space OAR gel is used. However, CyberKnife has very little data for patient reported outcomes at 10 years. It has a very low chance of causing cancer at 10 to 20 years after treatment. Finally, 40 to 50% of men will need to consider salvage radiation therapy with or without androgen deprivation therapy after surgery versus less than 10% of men that receive CyberKnife. Please feel free to post your comments or questions, and thank you.